على طول خلاص we're going yeah does the mic even make a difference oh yeah it does okay yeah that's actually better that light am I expect I expected more people after the fantastic first session I gave last class yeah last uh, I think uh, la I think labs end at five I think so some people might some people might show yeah but I have no one in my center of field of vision I'm just looking here and look <laughs> you guys are okay I'm just like have to address to everybody at the same time yeah yeah okay طيب okay. uh, before I start with the actual content, let's warm up a bit, so I, I hate analog watches. I never gift me an analog watch. Uh, yeah, we have some time, yeah, and you don't really uh, don't want to jam your brains with new information, especially when you have calculus finals. <laughs> uh, type any questions since our last session or any questions in questions questions in general I mean I went to Saudi I organized black hat amazing CTF uh, I got to meet some of the most talented teams in the world uh, I am nobody to them but I'm just like standing there and I'm like do you guys have any questions for me I'm good. I'm good. Thank you so much. My birthday is tomorrow. I will. I will censor my age because you guys made me. I'm 24 now. Yeah, you guys made me feel like I'm a dinosaur. 
I have to remember that some of you are like 18 or 17. Some of you are children. <laughs> you, I, seriously, you don't feel it. You graduate, and then you look in the mirror, and you're like, Wallah, I'm 22? Okay. And you just live your life like nothing changes. It's not this like magical. I remember I was a freshman. I was 17. You know, I had no facial hair whatsoever. And then like the seniors, beards that touch the floor and like, you know, and uh, nothing, nothing really happened. You know, same people. Sometimes I even, I'm surprised I'm 24. Sometimes we do things that make you feel like I'm 15. It's fine. Process. Yeah, I'm processing graduating. Yeah. You never, you never, you never process graduating, you know. It's, it's like a slap to the face. Because you wake up and you're like, oh, there is no more winter break now. I work till I die. No more summer. No more uh, sick leave. I mean, there is sick leave, but you'll be punished for it. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, so Saudi. Uh, I was at Black Hat last week. Uh, Black Hat is one of the more prestigious uh, cybersecurity events. Uh, and it had a prize pool of like over a million real. I think the top team, real, I said real. Sorry, my brain is fried. Uh, top team got like 700,000 real. Se uh, second team got half a million real. Third team got 300,000 real. Still a lot of a lot of money, you know. Uh, got to meet uh, some of the biggest names, as I said, Dice Gang, American team. Uh, Cat but sad, Russian team, uh, the Duck, a Chinese team, Project Sakai, uh, Japanese team, actually a Japanese Korean team. It was very, it was very interesting seeing these people. Yeah, yeah. These guys function on Red Bull, and if you if you cut them in half, they would just bleed Red Bull. I can't understand how you drink that, honestly. Let's see. Yeah. I, I, it tastes, it tastes like garbage. Yeah. It's like well, at the monster, G, G fuel, pure adrenaline. <laughs> so the thing is at Black Hat we invited the top 200 teams and unfortunately in those top 200 teams were a lot of beginner teams right so we had a lot of teams that like you know from some university in Jordan some university in Kuwait and these guys like all they did all they did was take a cybersecurity class and they have come to the gladiator arena okay and they've been sitting at the bottom of the scoreboard it's been the third day some of them are even wondering why they're here. But they, they tried, honestly. That's the thing. Like we, I would go around, and I, 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 don't, I don't really hang out on the big t tables because the big teams, when you look at them, you get scared. Everyone has noise-canceling headphones, okay, and like, uh, si like plastic on the side of his laptop so nobody but him and God can see the laptop screen, okay? And it's just like wired in. All right. Even even when they ask us, they're like, you know, like uh, we have a, on Discord, they they at us and they're like, come to table twenty two, we need help. I go and I'm like, guys, who opened the ticket? And they just like, and I was like, I have to tap the reverse engineering guy, and he's just like, what's happening? What? what who are you? What's? Going on? Uh, it was fun. It was. It's very stressful, obviously, eh, because barely slept that week. But uh, it's it's good at the end of the day. You know, the teams had fun. Everybody had fun, right? Except the reverse engineering guys, they did not have fun. Yeah, the, the people, literally the, the people who were playing reverse engineering this year, they, their number one feedback they gave was fire the reverse engineer creator. The guy who wrote the reverse engineering challenges. Anyway, so, any questions? Any technical questions? Anything? Remember, this is the last time you're going to see me until next semester, until maybe if we do something in the winter break. So... Yeah, and it, like the material I'm gonna teach you here is nice and cool and everything, but I'm like this will stay. Like you got, you can go home and continue playing and talk to me on WhatsApp. But like, if you send me like a live question on WhatsApp, I will probably leave you on read. Yeah, yeah, I have other things to do. Yes. Mm, okay, that's actually a good question. Uh, when I design CTF challenges, is it? Okay, so yeah, I was I was repeating this time. <laughs> Uh, so the question was, when I design CTF challenges, these security questions, is it solvable like only a specific way or like my vision? Yeah, sometimes depends on the idea. So if you have an idea of something like an SQL injection challenge, right? It's only going to be solvable using SQL injection. What the payload is specifically will depend depends on the experience of the person, right? Again, you'll understand more when you learn what SQL injection is. You'll see. Um, but there's a million ways to solve something. Actually, a lot of times, 
uh, one of the funny one of the funniest things that happened in the competition is so there's a brand of vulnerability called XSS. Okay, in web we have something called XSS. It st stands for cross site scripting. Basically, if you can inject a piece of malicious malicious JavaScript in a page, right? So usually the way this works in XSS challenges is you have some kind of system and you can report something and we will simulate an admin going to your post. So we had something that's like a Twitter clone where you can post tweets and then you can report tweets. And when you report tweets, an admin will go visit the tweet. So if you have malicious JavaScript, when the admin goes to visit the tweet, you'll run JavaScript on the, on the admin browser, right? Most of the time, we ask them to steal the session cookie or something and khalas. So this time, it was very complicated. One team, so we had, <laughs> um, so there's, there's this thing called regex, OK? Don't be confused. I'm going to say a lot of terms, but like uh, just to get the t total story. There's a thing called regex, which is essentially a language for pattern matching. In computers, it's a language specifically made to match patterns, OK? So we wanted to limit the domain on which the admin can visit. So we just wrote if the domain is equal to uh, auth.example.com, OK? So the problem is in regex, dot means any character. So this will still work if it's like authxexample.com. So what one team did is they went and they bought this domain. They bought a domain. They bought authaexample.com. They hosted a Chrome zero day on this link, and they sent the browser. It, they ignored the whole challenge completely, and they just hacked the browser, and they just pulled everything from the browser. Cost them like $150 just to solve this challenge. Okay, and, and it, was, it was very surprising because this challenge has the insane difficulty on it, which we expect will take like four hours, right? And we're sitting and the competition started and it's been 30 minutes and we'll just see first blood, this team, the Russian team, obviously always the Russians, okay? We're, so we run to the table, we're like, what happened? Yeah, and you're like, what did you do? We're like, oh, we just bought the domain, hosted one of our zero days and oh, casual stuff, you know, no problem. So yeah, yeah, so lots of unintended solutions, especially in crypto. What is a zero day? Okay, you know, but like, right. So uh, zero day, uh, again, is uh, a bug or a vulnerability that's never been disclosed, so nobody knows about it. So it's like a nuclear bomb equivalent, okay? Because nobody knows about it, nobody can fix it, and it will always work. So they had a bug that they, for some reason, keep in their pocket on how to hack Chrome browsers. Uh, especially in crypto challenges, a lot of the time, so our crypto guy, he's from uh, Netherlands, and he's uh, crazy. This is my opinion, because he instead of walking around like with a phone, like normally he's walking around with one of those uh, like paper things that you hold in your hand, and you can flip the paper and just keep writing. And every time you ask him any question, he's like, "Is this challenge solvable?" Just start solving equations. I'm like you need help, okay? So these guys they had their own thing. Our uh, binary exploitation or pwn author was Japanese, and uh, I don't even I'm looking at this guy's terminal and I don't know what's happening. He has like somehow like eight terminals on the same screen, and he's switching between them. And I was like, "You do your thing, man." All right. No, no, obviously not. Um, one thing you'll learn very quickly is that if you want to work in tech, you need to cover your laptop in stickers. If you don't have laptops, if I was a job interviewee and you come to the interview with no stickers, I'm kicking you out of the room. Okay, this is not a person who respects his computers. Okay, when we were there, it, it's. It's such a part of computer culture that the teams there organize sticker exchanges. Like we sat in a circle and it was like, what stickers do you have? It's like, I have these stickers. I'll give you this sticker for this sticker. So I got like, like 10 new stickers on my laptop when I went to Black Hat. Anyway, any other questions? Well, hello, let's get into the juicy material that we have. I mean, I don't even know what the material is. I'm just gonna start solving from where we stopped last time. I think last thing we did was the SSH brute force. We brute forced and we got the password and we stopped, I think, and then people, I think it was the password was fantasy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing? Well, we start, خلاص. Start? Okay, sure. All right, so, anyone new here who didn't attend the first session? Okay, all right, so I'm gonna explain what we're doing. Okay, that, that's good, good, I asked this question. Oh, uh, he, he, here's, here's a better question. Uh, am I seeing any of you guys next Tuesday at the ADQ CTF? You only, yeah? Okay. 
It's okay. I'll, I'll explain, I'll explain. So, so yeah, so okay, so for the new people, uh, I'll introduce myself. <laughs> My name is Yusuf, I'm an AOS graduate. Um, I graduated two years ago from this hellscape, and I've been doing cybersecurity for six years, so basically when I joined uh, AOS. And uh, I'm here to teach you guys skills so that you can go through a similar pathway that I did, which I graduated, and alhamdulillah, I had a job offer before I graduated. The guy asked me to drop out. I was like, please, yani, last semester, me finish. And um, I'm here to basically guide you through that. Right? So I'm an AOS student just like you. I went through the same thing. Yeah, what's the deal with the refugee like, uh, like camp that you have next to the student center? Like, is that the new student center? Food tent. Did they close the student center? Yeah, they Ah. And now when it rains, they close it when it comes back. Oh, really, really, really. I remember they did renovations, so like the red stairs and stuff, like the red parts of the student center were not there when I was a student. They just built that while we were sitting in the student center. So yeah, you didn't feel the difference. Student center is always as loud. Yeah, no difference whatsoever. Anyway, sidetrack. So yeah, I'm a student just like you guys. I've done the same courses. Uh, just like you, the, I actually have a major in computer engineering and a minor in CS, right? So I actually took most of the courses. If I could drop my uh, other unnecessary courses, let's call them, like the ones I was forced to take, I would also take more computer courses. Unfortunately, I didn't get to dabble much in the level four courses, so like uh, cloud computing and stuff like that. I really wanted to, but like you only have so many electives, right? I took the VR course. I mean, I, I listen, I, I love Dr. Hashem, come on, like uh, Hisham, yeah. I love him, I love him, sorry. I forgot, yeah, he, forgot the name. he was my advisor, Hatta. I used to camp in his office. Uh, the course is amazing, the content was amazing. I just thought that Hisham, at that semester when we took it, was overloaded, unfortunately, haram, yeah. They had so many courses on it. Yeah, I don't know how he handles it, but the course material, alhamdulillah. Yeah, I mean, we, at least we got access to the HPC, I remember, Nobody bothered to do the VR project until the like, last week. And like, I started seeing people that I've never seen before in the VR class. And we were like sitting and making a game, so yeah. Yep. You, you took most courses, yeah? Yep. Uh, do you think if you just sat on these courses and got full A's on all of them, would you do well? <laughs> That's a very interesting question. <laughs> okay, I have a very, very good comparison uh, for you. Yeah, yeah, I have a good, comp I have a good, good story, good story for you guys. So my fiance was kind of annoyed that I didn't mention her last, uh, last session. Okay, so I did. I'm not married. I'm engaged. I, I wish, wish I was married soon, soon, soon. So I did, I did uh, what was the only appropriate thing for a person of my caliber to do, which is I got engaged to the girl with the highest score in our batch. It's the only appropriate. Uh, <laughs> Um, so uh, she, her name is Dana, and uh, she is basically a complete contrast of me. Okay, so, so I do homework in the last possible second. Uh, she does it one week ahead of time. Yeah, <laughs> and I used to give her hell because, like, obviously, I was like, oh, "Come do with me all the lab reports," you know. Especially like circuits lab report where you have to write the story of your life and your ancestors in the lab report. Okay. So I would be like, yeah, yeah, we'll do it sometime soon. Be like in the library watching The Lion King or something, you know, with my friends. And then like the day before the deadline, hi, Yusuf, where's the lab report? I was like, I contributed this uh, objectives paragraph. <laughs> Can you do the rest? So uh, my fiance graduated with uh, top, uh, what do they? call those things those honors there's like letters there's like different words depending on how much gpa you got yeah whatever the high i never <laughs> i don't even know she'll kill me <laughs> i don't even know um so she's an example of that so me and her her situation is very different she is very focused on academia so when she graduated and she tried to work so she was very much in ai right when she graduated she kind of struggled to find a real life application to what she was doing because she didn't know that much Python. She didn't, all she knew was the theory. And so unfortunately, when you dedicate yourself to get like these high grades in class, you miss out on the time that's necessary. I mean, imagine, like, like you have to rip yourself into a thousand pieces to get A's in all your classes in AOS, right? And 
when she graduated, she was like, what am I going to do now? All I know is some Python. And uh, again, I don't want to diss her. She's a thousand times smarter than me, okay? And she can, like, <laughs> if she does what I do, she will get me out of a job, yeah. Um, so she just went to do masters. And that's what most people actually from my batch did. When they sat down and they applied for jobs and they realized that they, they don't have the skills, they were like, okay, I have an existential crisis now. I guess I will just continue what I was doing and just go for a masters. A lot of people actually went to masters just as a mechanism because they didn't have anything to do. And you can't be unemployed for like a year and a half. Like, what are you going to do? So just go for a master's. And just hope that by the time you finish your master's, you will get a job or become a doctor. And then once you become a doctor, either you will get a job or you will start teaching somehow. But yeah, so good question. Um, yeah, listen, you guys don't have to be afraid, okay? Like, I know I'm giving you terrifying vibes right now, but it's like, oh, you have a winter break coming, right? Take a few days, relax, format everything you learned the last semester, which always happens. And then just all you have to do is dedicate a couple of hours. Yeah, and me, me right now, right? Me right now. Uh, I kept all my hobbies. I go out to the desert with my on the weekend with my friends. I play games. I stream on Twitch sometimes. I, I mean, I do, yeah. Dead packets, yeah. What is it going to be? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> um... And because I've managed to form a love for computers, the knowledge that I want to get or like the activities that I want to do, sometimes if I'm bored and you get tired of video games eventually, I'm like, why don't I learn this language that I didn't get a chance to learn? One hour, two hours. Yeah, while I am doing something, I'll put a YouTube tutorial on some topic that I don't know anything about. You know, like those channels like Live Overflow, for example, right? Yeah, exactly. But, for, but No, no, okay. I mean, the, the, the university is not going to be completely useless. I mean, why are you here? Right? The university acts as a the first step. Okay? It's just like the first step in the stairs. Whatever. <laughs> okay? It gives you the base knowledge. Right? I used to, when I was in university, I was very angry all the time. I was like, I don't want to take this course. What is this? Why am I learning about how RAM operated back in 1998? What is this? Right, the, whole, the whole time, all right, fighting with the professor. It's like, professor, this is wrong. And, it's like, and then when I graduated and I was working on a couple of like real, and I, I held this hatred from in me for a long time. For a long time, anybody would ask me about university. I was like, useless, drop out. Okay, go go work, uh, Talabat driver for four years better than going to university. I swear, I was, I was just very angry at the university for a long time. Then slowly and slowly, when I started working on these projects and I started programming, um, and I, I remember I came across one problem, and I was like, yeah, I don't know, I don't know how to do this problem. I had like code, like multiple threads, and they're accessing the same thing at the same time, and it's crashing because you know multiple threads are looking at the same variable, and it's crashing. I was like, yeah, I was, why, how can I solve this problem? I was like, oh my god! And I took this. I can lock the thread. Thank you, Barless. Thank you. I can lock, I, I learned about locking threads in, in, in uh, operating systems and I, and I implemented the lock and I was like, this worked. So it's like, you know, the knowledge never leaves you, right? The, the base knowledge never leaves you. The networking knowledge never leaves you. The, the programming concepts of what is a variable, what is whatever, they never leave you, right? So the, univer the university courses, none of them are useless. They, they act as like the 1% of knowledge and you have to decide whether you want the rest or not. For example, my biggest weakness is hardware. I don't like electricity. I don't want to do voltages and do all that. What is the, I, I'm not, I, I don't even remember anything. This is how traumatizing it was for me. I remember we took electronics to uh, during COVID and I was sitting online and I was just like, this is torture. Like the whole class is equations. What is happening, right? What is this cute? I, um, <laughs> What is, no, no, because like it would be a cute circuit. It would be like a battery and like a light bulb. And it would be like, find out the weight of the atoms and this. And it's like, what's that? <laughs> uh, nobody cheated, okay? We are AUS students. So number one uh, in integrity and uh, honest solving. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so the courses are not. Uh, they're never right you guys have winter break coming up okay at the end of this 
after we finish talking today, I will show you some resources. I'm sure Adham has resources. Adham, you know, he's working his ass off. He's posting resources on the group every five minutes. Yeah. Yeah, the base, yeah. Uh, okay. Good question. Uh, I run my own company and I've had a job for two years now when I graduated and I have a GPA of 2.9. So, thank you, thank you. I worked very hard to get that 2.9, okay? <laughs> it's actually 2.99 and then I rounded it on my CV to 3.0 because nobody will... will go. If Exactly, yeah, okay. So it depends on what you wanna what you wanna do, right? If you wanna get into academia, for example, I would love to be a teacher at some point, right? Like as you can see, it's clearly my thing, right? But no university will take a master's student with 2.9, let alone a PhD with 2.9, right? So I kind of doomed myself to do these workshops here, okay? And but some people, for example, they do want to chase academia, even if just an MBA or a master's or whatever. You need the GPA for that. Now, there is the whole uh, idea that GPA equals higher uh, uh, pay. I can tell you this is the most ridiculous lie I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, yeah mashallah, you will get me one guy, 4.0 GPA across the whole thing. Hello, what is uh, React? What? Can you give me a stochastics equation? And I was like, <laughs> what about your job, Habibi? What are you doing? Okay, so the GPA is not everything, right? Uh, it's a, a, Yeah, it might... If you're applying as a pure freshman, like straight fresh out of the factory from graduating, maybe it will give you an edge against other people. But trust me, what recruiters want to see is skills. Even, 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 even sample projects, anything. Just prove to me that you opened a computer and did something. You know, not that you just sat in university and did nothing. Don't fail your classes. Don't get a ter terrible GPA. Don't get like a 2.6. Okay, above above three is good. You know, maintain above three. It depends. Yani. And uh, my parents, uh, they were very upset and then they gave up. They're like, Wallahi, I'm uh, yani. I will not be upset on your GPA anymore. My dad suffered a heart attack every semester. Yani. Okay. No, don't. <laughs> don't, don't. Like, it was, it was uh, such a shock to me. Like, first semester, 2.7. I was like, it's okay, I got this. Then 2.1. I was like, okay, I do not got this. Then it's like 3.5. I was like, okay, I got this. Then 2.5. Every time I relaxed, it just dropped to the ground. I think my senior year was the only time where I got like 3.8 and then like 3.6. I was like, okay, I got an average of 2.99. Good. Uh, but yeah, keep a good, yeah, yeah, I know we're getting to the ground. Yeah, they're enjoying. They will stop enjoying once I open the content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, خلاص. let's just start. So for those of you who are joining us today, uh, what we are doing is, and just a refresher for those of you who have amnesia, that we are doing a series of Linux challenges that I have developed, okay, a long time ago. And I'm using those, the, the, those Linux challenges to teach you the basics of Linux and computers and cybersecurity in general. So we're gonna go through a journey of like basic Linux commands, networking concepts, everything, right? And so from last session, I just need you to remember a couple of things. Remember when I said there is a very famous explanation that we use for things in computers when we just don't have an explanation? We just say because God intended it so, okay? There will be a lot of questions you will ask me and the answer will be because God intended it so. A second thing is uh, you guys can interrupt me at any point in time, okay? I don't know what, I'll, I'll, I'll explain how to connect now and everything. Uh, I don't know what you guys don't know, okay? I might say something and to me this is a very normal thing because I've used it for the past five years and you don't know what the hell I'm talking about. So just raise your hand and be like, hello, what? Uh, I will answer. Okay? So if you want to follow along, you can on your own laptops. If you would rather sit and watch me do it, you would, it will be the same thing. Okay? So from last time, what we did, we solved seven challenges. We learned a couple of basic Linux commands. First one was ls, which lets us list files. Second one was cat, which lets us read files. Third one was uh, cp for copy. MV for move, and then that's pretty much it. We learned about the idea of piping, how to send the output of one command to another command, and I'll, I'll revise that again, no problem. And we learned about grep. 
which is the filtering command, right? Okay, so the, the, the challenges will kind of shift a bit in concept as we get higher and higher. They'll move away from Linux concepts and start to be more like security concepts a tiny bit. Okay, so I'll show you guys the command to connect, okay? What we're using is we're using SSH, secure shell, right? To connect to my, this is, this is flag yard, this is flag, this is all of, all of this is when I was in, what was it, child seven? Let's just do child seven. Right, okay, this is the command, yep. SSH, which lets us remotely connect to computers, username, right? Child seven, seventh challenge, this cloud.deadpackets.pw, this is the address of my home. So this is literally my house router. Please don't do anything to my house. And uh, port 22,000, because the default port for SSH is 22. You don't need Linux for this. Normal Windows, Mac, SSH is installed on every computer on the planet, okay? So this should work for you. This is a server that I have sitting next to my bed, as I said last time, my white noise generator. Secure Shell, it's just a protocol that allows you to remotely open a terminal on another computer. So when you, it answers the question, how do I log in via terminal to another computer? You use SSH, secure shell. That's just, it's a protocol for that. That's it, yeah? It's not by default installed, you have to install it. Uh, yeah. Everything can be done from nice, uh, a nice server that I've made. Linux is the best, obviously. Yeah. Uh, you could technically install Hydra on a Windows computer, but that's just suffering. Yeah, that's just suffering. Yep. Oh, the password. So the password for this, when you press enter, it's gonna ask you, it's fantasy all lowercase, and when you type, you will not see anything. Again, that's normal, okay? Ubuntu, why are you here? Go away. So see, when I type stuff, there is nothing. I don't see anything. This is Linux, okay? Passwords just go to the void. Okay. So this challenge seven, this was actually like kind of like a, like an Easter egg challenge where you we brute forced the password. So we actually ran a brute force attack and we brute forced the password for challenge seven, right? So let's use the commands that we learned, right? First thing we're gonna do is ls flag.txt cat for reading files. Oops. Ta-da. Okay. So again, if you're doing this for the first time, this is called a CTF. What a CTF stands for is capture the flag. In computers, when we say capture the flag, we mean stuff like this. Small pieces of text. Okay, it's just the word flag grabbed and stuff. So when you attend a CTF competition, like the ones that, when I said ADQ, I am organizing a CTF competition next Tuesday. I mean, registration is already closed. Uh, 100... Uh, 50 students, 50 professionals, something like that? No, no. Trust me, I, you would not want to, it will be suffering for everybody that is there. Uh, and the goal is to find flags, right? And then the more flags you find, the more points you get, and then you get money or you get recognition or a high five, whatever it is. Okay, any questions? I don't want anybody to be confused. Ask, they're okay, for the new people, well, there are no stupid questions. You could ask me, where am I? I will tell you, okay, well, I'll start explaining, okay? The, <laughs> the, the, my biggest problem with uh, like courses is that you guys get afraid to ask because if you ask the professor like a question that takes more than 10 minutes to explain, he will probably kick you from the class. So I'm not like that. Ask anything, okay? Okay, so list files, all right? LS stands for list list files, and then cat for what? Cat to read files, that's it, right? Okay, everything good? Good, okay. Next one. So, the way this, these challenges work is that we take what's between the braces, and that's the password for the next user, okay? So, take this. All right, we type exit to log out, or log out, whichever it is you want to do. We're gonna press up, to bring the previous command, change this from child seven to child eight, and then paste. Ta-da! Okay, this is gonna be fun. Can you guys still read this? This is, 
This is the best, right? Okay. So this is a very interesting one. For some reason, I help. For some reason, I can't run any commands. They are all just empty or echo back what I wrote. Can you figure out what is happening and get the fact? So let's try. What tools do we have? We have LS. Let's run LS. Nothing. Any ideas? LS-A. Good. So for those of you who were not here last time, dash A means show me hidden files. Da dash A is an option for LS for all. So there are, by default, there are some files hidden. But for some reason, when I did LS-A, it just spit back what I wrote. LS, it just spit back a dash A. So what's, what's happening? I'll move this to the top of the screen. Yeah, it's an echo. That's actually a good idea. Oh, crap. Why can't I clear? Help. Damn, that's crazy. Are we just doomed to be at the bottom of the screen? OK, I'll just make this smaller. Uh, can you go away? Thank you. The what? Thin? Bin. Is that a command? Oh, OK, you're, you're solving. Wait, wait, I need to, because you already solved with me on WhatsApp. I have to explain to the rest of them. OK, so ls, right, ls-a, it's spitting out whatever I wrote. Do we know any other commands? Just give me ideas, shoot ideas. Cat, right? Let's do cat. And then let's use our trusty friend tab. OK, so tab auto-completed, and we did actually see some stuff. So I can see that there's a file called flag.txt. Let's do that. Nothing. It spit out what I gave it. Ah. It's almost like every single one of my commands, and I'll give you a hint. I'll, I'll just show you what's happening, right? So I'll just do cat. OK, ls. OK, it's just. So it looks like all of our commands got replaced with echo. Okay. Somehow, all of our commands got replaced with echo. Whatever I type, af whatever I type after, just gets spit back. Type. So clearly, this is some coworker who wants a hot cup of coffee to the face in the morning. What's what's happening? I mean, like, well, so there's another file here that's very important. This file, this bash underscore profile. Probably it's the first time you've seen it. That's fine. With some googling, you will learn that in this bash profile. This file, every time you log in, any commands that you put in this file get executed. So this file, this magical file, is the answer to the question, how do I run commands every time I log in? So this bash profile, anything that you put inside here, every time you log in, whether that's terminal, whether that's SSH, whatever, gets run. So clearly, something is happening here. I've done something very evil and genius at the same time here. So. Let's discuss what happens when I do this. What happens in Linux when you type a command? OK, what happens? Type. What happens when you type a command in Linux is the following. This command, the system is going to look what you typed, cat. Where is cat on the system? So you'll actually be surprised that every command you run is actually like a small exe file that's placed somewhere in Linux. Okay. So it actually needs to find where cat is. Where is this cat binary, we call it? Where is, where is this cat command? And the places where it looks are the following. Let's see if this will work. Uh, oh, hello, sir. Damn, that's crazy. OK, I have to show you. <laughs> in a different terminal. OK. Actually, I'll just show you on my terminal. Why not? But my terminal might be a bit uh, scary. Well, we're going to see all my echo commands now. OK. Yusuf, what is this horror you have unleashed on my eyes? I will explain. So <laughs> this is this dollar. OK, have any of you guys heard? Uh, you guys know what a variable is, right? So far, so good. Variable, no problem, OK? 
This is what we call an environment variable, okay? It's, it's like a variable that lives in your shell. This is the shell. This is the thing where you're running commands. It's a local variable in your shell, but we call it environment variable. Why? Because God intended it so, okay? So when you want to read the value of an environment variable in bash, you put a dollar in front of it, okay? And there's actually, you can actually have as, as much as environment variables as you want, and they actually exist everywhere, all the time. So, if I run env, yeah, this will be a bit scary, okay. Yeah, these are a list of like all the environment variables that are defined in my shell right now. A bunch of stuff is, a bunch of stuff is going on, okay? I haven't even seen half of these. I don't know what's happening. But some programs somewhere in my Linux machine use these environment variables, okay? I genuinely don't know what's happening here. And that's okay. Some of them I know, like PWD. This environment variable holds which folder I am in all the time, okay? So this is print working directory. This environment variable knows where I am. Some of them are... That's pretty much all I can understand from this. <laughs> Let's move up a bit. Maybe at the bottom. Uh, K uh, Kitty is the name of this terminal. That's the thing. The terminal is called Kitty. Uh, <laughs> Why don't I use the regular terminal? Because it looks like garbage. Because it looks ugly. You see these nice colors? See these nice symbols that you're getting? See the, all these nice, see how this nice icon? This is kit, no, okay, well, we're gonna get into shell customization and this is, there's a whole subreddit on shell customization it will take forever, okay? No, no, also you see these tabs at the bottom? I can like switch between the tabs of my terminal. These are tabs, like this is a different tab, right? So this is why I like kitty. Also it's like very minimal or whatever. Anyway, environment variables. They are variables that are in your shell. All I want you to look at is the path variable, which is this, which I have unfortunately moved to the void. Here. Thank you. Okay. Again. need to keep track. Damn, we finished an hour already? Damn. Inshallah. I should go, I should go faster now. Five, okay. We're gonna speed up. Bear with me. So, this horror that you are looking at, okay? What is this? So, you see how there's folders? You'll notice that some folders are defined, 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 and then colon. And then we start a new folder. And then colon. And then we start a new folder. And then colon. So this is a list of folders where Linux will look for commands when you type them. So when you type cat, it's going to go to this first folder here, dead packets, pyn, blah, 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 blah. Is cat here? No. Move to the next one. Is cat here? No. And it does that in a split second. So this is what we call the uh, path environment variable. It's very important in Linux. This is literally where all your commands are. That's why when you type a command, let's say, for example, you install Python, and you run Python, and it tells you command not found. Sometimes what they will tell you is, they will tell you check your path environment variable. You can change this, by the way. You can change this, you can put whatever folders you want here. Maybe the folder where Python is installed was not here, is not in your path, right? So, what? No, no, any command that you type, anything. If I type anything in my terminal and press enter, the first thing that it does is it takes the first word okay, which is the command, and looks in the path environment variables, right? So the most common one that you'll see in every Linux system on the planet, we have slash user slash bin, slash sbin, slash bin, okay? These are folders on the computer, slash bin being the most famous one, okay? And I can actually show you, we're going to ls slash bin. We're gonna take a look at all the commands that are there. Okay, a lot of them. Okay, literally, if you ever want to, if you're feeling bored one night and be like, oh, what commands are on my system, okay? Just 
list. I don't even know what half of these do. What, what does this do? M fluid, what, what is this? Okay, I don't even know. I think the only thing I recognize here is MD5 sum. Not even X kill, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know half of these commands, okay? Oh, okay. So green means executable. This is my shell, it tells me when I ls. Green means I can run this. This is, I don't know, okay? <laughs> Something, but clearly not an executable. <laughs> sure, what's x kill? Select the window whose client you wish to kill with button one. What is button one? What is, what is if I click this terminal, Yanni? What is, it, what is this? <laughs> okay, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so anyway, so the idea is we have commands that exist in folders on Linux. And the path environment variable does that, yes. I just, I just, okay. So this is just some coloring in my shell, okay? This green automatically gets put on files that it detects are executable. This blue, I have no clue what this is, okay? You'll actually notice if I just do an ls real quick uh, in my normal folder. Oh look, I have a readme. These, oh, these are folders. Okay, sorry, the colors are kind of messed up. Uh, these are folders, the blue is folders, the white is nothing, and yeah, those are folders, okay? Yeah, yeah okay, cool. Normally Linux, by the way, Linux doesn't have colors by default, it's just hell, everything is black and white, so you just have to, this is just some helping, yeah. CD, just CD to the, Change directory, yeah? Okay, so now we know that there are files, the commands are actually, just, just okay, we, we, we joked a lot, so let's just combine the knowledge, right? We learned about something called the environment variables in the in shell, we, we saw them. We learned about the most important one of, of them all, the path environment variable, which tells our system where to look for commands. Now, if our commands exist in folders on the system, can't we, yes, no, this is just, this is my terminal. Yeah, 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 I'll talk about that. So the path in the challenge is messed up and I'll, I'll explain that. So, if our commands exist somewhere on the system, can't we just reference those commands directly, skipping the part where we have to tell Linux to look for the path variable? Let's say I'm a performance freak, okay? The couple nanoseconds that Linux will take to look for those through those folders, I wanna save them. I want to tell Linux exactly where my command is. Well, it turns out that you can do something called full path in Linux, in which instead of saying ls, I can do slash bin slash ls. And I am referencing the ls command right from the start. I am. I'm, I'm telling Linux, don't go look through where the path environment variable is. I'm telling you where the command is. Run this file directly. Run this binary directly. And so that does the same thing, same effect. I mean, you'll notice that the colors are gone, right? Because for a bunch, bunch of reasons I will not go through right now, uh, but it does the same thing, okay? This skips the, the path variable search thing, okay? So. What can we do with this? Well, let's learn. Oh, by the way, a really cool thing you can do on Linux is you can run this command. Let's say, so if you wanna know where something is, like this command is somewhere in my path, right? But I don't know where. You can do which and then write the command and if it finds it in the path, it'll just spit out the whole thing, right? So you could have done which ls and then it will tell you where ls is, right? Well, we'll get to it. Okay, so let's go back to the challenge. Right now, what happens if I reference ls using the full path? So slash bin, slash ls. Nothing. Well, let's add our, our friend dash a. Bin is just a folder in Linux which stands for binary. This is one of the many default folders in Linux where we put most of the normal ins default installed commands. 
right? There's a bunch of folders in Linux. Actually, uh, that's actually a good question. Let's talk about real quick. If since we're giving out knowledge, let's just talk about these folders. So these folders you will find on every single Linux operating system. They have usages. So slash bin stands for binary. This is where most of the default commands come installed in. Slash dev. Dev doesn't stand for developer. It stands for devices. So in Linux, we have this philosophy that everything is a file. Everything. Your keyboard is a file. Your Wi-Fi adapter is a file. Everything. How does this work? Because God intended it so. I mean, I can explain, but we'll get into a lot of things. ETC literally stands for etc. This is where you put all your configuration files and stuff like that, stuff that the system uses. Okay? Slash lib stands for libraries. This is where all your libraries go. Media is when you plug in USBs. Uh, optional is as free space for you to do whatever you want. Although, again, this is Linux, you can do whatever you want. Slash root, this is where the administrator's users folders go. Sbin is also like bin, but not at bin. Yes, <laughs> it's the same thing. <laughs> it's a bin folder, but just not a bin folder, okay? Like, you also put commands in here if you want to, but it's just a different place in case you don't want to. This is reserved for default commands that come with the raw core operating system of Linux. If you install something new, don't put it in bin. It's better to put it, yeah, right? For example, let's say if you do a system restoration point, most likely it will try to recover everything here because this is the core, this is what we need. Everything else is unimportant. Sys is a bunch of system files, again, kernel files and stuff like that. We're going to go through a lot of these files. Lib64 is just 64-bit libraries. Uh, ignore conf.de, ignore entry point.sh. Home is, is equivalent to the C users in Windows, where all the users are. So if you list home, you'll see all the folders of all the users in the system. Mount is if you're mounting a hard drive, so not a USB. Media is for like small things, SD card, USB. Hard drive, SSD goes in mount. Proc is a folder where all the processes go. Again, in Linux, everything is a file. When you run a process, you'll actually see a file here with the process ID, and that's way too much information, okay? Run, ignore this. Serve, ignore this, <laughs> because the explanation is too long. Temp is temporary. This folder clears every time you restart the computer. And slash var is also just forget it. <laughs> it's way too much. Yeah. No, temp is not RAM. Temp is like C slash temp in, in Windows. It's just a temporary, if you want to do a temporary folder. Who the hell is calling me? Smart Wings. Thank you. I don't want Wings. <laughs> so temp is just, uh, yeah, temporary, right? OK. Cool. We're going to, this is a little bit of Linux trivia knowledge. Okay. So, yeah, it's okay. We'll cover a lot in this hour. We'll, we'll pick up. Don't worry. Okay. LS, let's do dash A for all. We see dot flag dot txt. We can do slash bin slash cat dot flag dot txt. We get the flag. Awesome. Awesome. So, this, this didn't really scratch the itch that's inside me. Why were, all, why were all of our commands edited to be echo? Why? This is, aliases, yes, you destroyed the pronunciation, but yes. <laughs> Alias. Alias. <laughs> okay, so in, in Bash, we have something called aliases. Okay? So, alias. <laughs> so. So aliases, basically, what they do is, what if you wanted to redefine uh, a command as another command? So all I did was I just wrote alias, a bunch of commands, and I just made them all to echo. So when you type a command like ls, the bash thing is just like, okay, ls is actually an alias for echo. So I'm just going to swap out the ls and just put echo in its place. This is often useful for stuff like this. So you see l. If I'm lazy and I don't want to type ls la dash dash color, I can just do l, and then when I just press l, it'll just run ls la blah blah blah. Okay? You'll actually see on my shell, l is defined properly. If I think if I run l here, it won't work. Yeah, okay. If I run l here, see? It just runs ls la, and there's like a bunch of bajillion files here because this is my computer. But yeah. All right, cool.
We learned about aliases. Oh, and by the way, where did I store those aliases? Remember that dot bash profile I told I showed you? The thing that it runs commands when you log in? You'll be surprised. There it is. Slash bin slash cat dot bash profile. There it is. And I did something very funny at the bottom here. You'll see. So time to make lots of people very angry at their terminals <laughs> and just alias a bunch of things. And then at the bottom, you can't see it, but I rewrote the path variable to be nothing. So there's no path variable. So just in case you manage to find the command that's not here, I just removed it all. OK? So you just need to be able, yeah. Cat will rely on the in path environment variable for Linux, you're basically telling Linux, find where this command is. Slash bin slash cat is, I'm running this specific command, right? Commands in Linux are actually tiny exe files. So you're technically running tiny exe files every time you run commands, yeah? I'm replacing the ls command when you type ls in your terminal. It's actually going to run echo. So I'm just making your life hard. Echo, just whatever you put next to it, will just spit it out. Because it doesn't have the alias. The alias is only for this account. Yes, I, I did this challenge specifically for you to learn about aliases. Right? OK. <laughs> All right, so let's copy the flag. Yalla, yalla, let's pick up. Yeah, if you guys want information, we have to pick up. Any questions about this? Anything? OK, cool. Next one. Challenge nine, we're gonna paste. Boom, we're in. Okay, we got kicked out. We got kicked out. You're probably also going to get kicked out. You probably, you guys are trying to log into challenge nine and you're getting uh, kicked out. So it says, help, I can't stay logged in for more for long. The shell immediately exits, help me. And then we get a small message at the bottom in white. It says, begone demon, the power of bash profile compels you and we get logged out. So. We already know what bash profile is, right? We know that it's a file that runs commands every time you log in. Now here's a genius idea. What if I have a coworker, okay, who always snitches on me and I just want to make them have a very bad day, okay? I will go to their bash profile and I will just add one word, exit. Every time they log in, you, they get kicked out. They log in, they get kicked out. They log in, they get kicked out. What do I do? How do I bypass this? You know, we, we want to log in, clearly there's a way to bypass this. So this is actually a feature in SSH itself. So what if you wanted to SSH, you wanted to log in, but you don't wanna run a shell. You don't wanna get this whole prompt. What if you just wanna run one command, like ping something and khalas. So there's a way in SSH to say, hey, I just wanna run one command and then just exit. So what you will do in SSH, let's bring back the SSH command, right? Let's bring it to the top of the screen. Here, all you have to do is just space, Open quotations and write your command. Uh, oh, grab, we have to paste the password every time. There you go. See? It worked. It listed and there's flag.txt at the top. So this bypassed the whole opening a shell thing. It just ran the command directly and came back with the output. And it closed the SSH session. So we're bypassing the bash profile. We're bypassing all those things by just running a single command and leaving. Okay, so in that case, I can just simply do cat flag.txt, uh, paste the password, and we're done. That's it. All this, this point of this challenge, all I wanted you to learn is that you can bypass the like opening a shell and everything by just putting commands after your SSH command. That's it. Very small micro bit of knowledge. Any questions? Yes. No, uh, before before they, they get to the choppers and Arnold. Uh, I, I wrote this at like 3 a.m., guys, okay? You will see weird flags by then. You will see flags like, please God, you know, by, by then. Yeah. Don't worry, we're not getting to the... True? Are you guys running it? Next one, challenge 10. I want to do at least five, guys, before we call it a day. 
Oh, what? Oh, okay, I have to remove this. Remember to remove the command. Okay, this is a very interesting one. Very interesting one. It took you forever to get. <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Okay, so we don't know anything. All we know is it says here, I have a feeling that some evil people were here before. They must have left a trace, okay? Evil people, okay? So here's what we're going to do. Let's just use the tools that we already know. Clear to wipe the terminal, ls-a. Okay, I have a file called bash history, okay? Again. Same thing, this is one of those files that automatically exists in your shell. Every command that you type, you, you can do what you want by the way, it's okay. Yeah. Every command that you type gets saved to this bash history file in your shell on Linux, okay? Now the reason for that is not some you know privacy invasion something, it's, it's actually made so that you can go, look, go back and look at your history in case you forgot something, okay? But the problem with the, ba with the bash history file is that it's just a, it's just a plain text file. Anyone can read it. Just literally, if you cat it, you will just see. <laughs> you can continue doing your thing if you need time yet. Uh, if we cat this bash history file, you can just see all the commands. If I actually go to my real terminal, you'll see I also have a bash history, but it's like several hundred MB because it's like every command I've written for the past like two years since I have this laptop. Don't you guys want those printed certificates? <laughs> like, mom, dad, I did something in university today. <laughs> I was a student, yeah. <laughs> Hey, yours, yeah, yeah. You know, as an alumni, the logging into your AOS email is a very puzzling experience. Because you have to type, if you're logging in from Google, okay, I won't distract you with my amazing stories. Oh yeah, by the way, that's one idea that every genius guy friend group gets when they finish college. They're like, guys, let's buy a microphone, we'll sit on a table, and we'll do a podcast. Wallah, one guy has one opinion that put you all in jail, and you just delete the podcast. Thank you so much, guys. Everyone go home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we, we bought a mic, uh, like a 360 mic, and we sat down at the table, we were like, okay, guys, and we had a whole system. You're gonna raise your hand if you wanna speak. Immediately, first topic was like something like you know marriage or something. Immediately, t 10 minutes in, it was a disaster. We're like, turn off the microphone. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Everybody go home. <laughs> a disaster. <laughs> yeah. No, of course not. This is a long time ago. Anyway. All right. We can continue, Adam? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I got you. Okay, so let's cat dot bash history, right? Let's go back. Let's read what these guys did. Okay, so let's see. First command: apk add w get. Okay, I'm dumb. I don't know what this is. Okay, very easily I will just hello chat GPT. Can you explain what this command does? Okay, chat GPT will tell you this command is for installing packages on the Alpine operating system. If they're just installing the command called wget. Okay, this has nothing to do. <laughs> this has nothing to do with me. Next, wget terroristwebsite.org. They're downloading a file called secret plans. They're saving it to secret file. So wget, wget is the equivalent of right click, save file in your browser. Just downloads, downloads whatever it is and saves it. Okay, so they downloaded some file called secret plan and they saved it as secret file. So far, so good. No, no questions. Then they moved this secret file 
from secret file to slash etc not a secret file and then they removed everything locally and they left they went home so logically speaking what am i doing now what's the next step opening this this etc file that's what we understood they downloaded something they moved it somewhere and they left so i will just cat this maybe a trap maybe my computer will explode who knows maybe it's a trap from my past self Tada! Easy. <laughs> Did it take more than <laughs> one minute? The whole purpose of this is to show you the bash history file. Again, yes. Uh, so, okay, this is actually a, <laughs> this is actually a very important thing. Uh, never run this command in your entire life, okay? I'll tell you something. Linux has no concept of recycle bin. When you delete a file, it's gone. Halas, nothing, no afterlife, nothing, gone, bah. The only thing is to sit and live with your failure if you deleted something wrong. So, R, R, so RM by default comes with a lot of safety features to make sure you are really doing what you're supposed to be doing. For example, RM will refuse to remove folders until you put dash R for recursive. And then if you get a, an, an error or something or it's a sensitive file, it will ask you, are you sure you want to delete this folder? So then you put F for force. So RM dash RF, Basically, recursive and, and force means delete everything and don't ask me anything. I know what I'm doing. Most of the time, you don't know what you're doing. And I lost so many times I'm in the wrong folder. And I'm like, uh, one time I was in my home folder where everything, my whole life is. And I was like, remove rm, uh, rf uh, dot slash star. And then I'm like running Python and Python doesn't work anymore. Py command not found. I was like, oh, what's happening? And I realized my whole life is gone. Okay. And like I said, there is no recycle bin. There is nothing you can do except just look at the screen and accept... Khalas, <laughs> accept defeat. There is nothing. <laughs> so one, one, one funny uh, thing that people like to do, which you should never do to other people because it's very evil, is they like to tell people, "Oh, are you learning Linux? Run rm rf slash." Well, it's not really alt f4 because your computer will not come back from that. Yeah, delete system thirty two basically, and and <laughs> and Linux will not. Linux will tell you, "No problem, Habibi. You want to delete slash? Okay, here we go." No, no worries. <laughs> it will not even ask you for anything. Okay, so. No, no, no. Okay, so if you want to view your history in Linux, you can just type the command history. Right? And there we go. We have a nice formatted view of our history. Right? Okay, so. <laughs> You know, so a common thing that I do sometimes if I, like in my work, if I forget how a command works, I'll run history. You can already see, look, I just grep. So for those of you who are here for the first time, this is a pipe symbol. What this does is it takes the output of the first command and puts it as input to the second command. Grep is uh, basically control F, filter. So I am running my history and I'm just filtering for this matrix. See, and it shows me my whole history. Uh, I really wanted to do this because in a conference I was very bored, so I wanted to do this. C matrix is just one of those commands that are just like uh, it. It just does this this matrix effect, and then lolcat just turns everything rainbow. You'll uh, run into these uh, fellas really soon, by the way, in our challenges. So let's take this flag. Let's go to the next one. Let's pick up the pace. Come on, come on. We need to get to 15. There's 33. Yeah, you can do them from home. 33. 33, actually, and Adam, you know, I have 10 poon challenges, but I commented them out from the... I can put them back in. <laughs> All right. So let's read here. So we have, <clears throat> this file has been encoded in base64. Inside it is a password hashed in MD5. Can you find out the plain text of the hash? That is a lot of words that I don't know. 80% of this sentence, I don't know. So let's take it step by step. Yes, but I'm pretending to be you. <laughs> this file has been encoded in base64. Top, okay. One piece at a time. What file? Let's just do ls. Let's see what's happening. Type. ls encrypted flag. Cat encrypted flag. Fear. Okay. 
I see <laughs> letters. All right, so Base64 was one of those algorithms that was devised, for example, someone wanted to ask, someone had a brilliant question. What if I wanted to copy a file from one computer to the other, but I wanted to make it very difficult for myself? Okay, so I was like, okay, encode it in this algorithm and copy the character. Uh, okay, you're not gonna get this joke, but whatever, I realized halfway through. Anyway, base64 is an, for example, okay, one thing we do in CTFs where, where the computer doesn't have internet access, and uh, so they, because they don't want you to download the files. So what we do is we base64 encode the file that we want, and we have one guy dedicated, this is his life, character, character copies it to the other computer, okay? Usually it's the guy with the lowest score in the team, and this is punishment. So it's, and sometimes it's like 10 pages, and the guy is just like, uh, N, I, P, three, four, because this can be decoded. You can decode base64 to get the original input back. Why was base64 made? You will realize later it has so many applications in computers, yes? Uh, Luke, I am your father, first letter, capital. Okay, so Base64 is an encoding algorithm. We call it encoding because you can encode and decode. Okay, so anything that gets turned into Base64 can get turned back into normal text. So we can do this from the terminal, which is the fancy way, or we could do this from a website, which is no problem, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yes, we have. Uh, there was one CTF challenge I wrote. I remember I was very upset that day. So I just went into Python and I took the flag and I base64 encoded it 1,000 times. And I was like, here is your file. And it was like a 500 MB text file. And I was like, enjoy. Because it gets longer a little bit each time. Uh, there was actually one CTF where they, the flag was a file and they zipped it 1,000 times. And, I, uh, and it was so annoying because you had to like, Unzip and then you get the new zip, unzip, and you do it. And I was like, what is this? Yeah, thank God I knew Python at the time, so I just unzipped a thousand times. Anyway, so let's do this the browser way because it's the safe way. Yes. Look, I am your father. I and then am A M. Yeah. Okay. So there is this very nice website that was made by our friends at the British uh uh What's the, uh, they're not MI6, they're the cybersecurity MI6. They have a name, yeah. GCHQ, right? Our friends at GCHQ made a website for us. It's called CyberChef. No, no, it's not the safer way. It's just the, this CyberChef is a very common tool we use in CTFs, okay? Because you can put input here, and then you can do all these million things here, and you will get an output, okay? So let's copy our base64 encoded text, okay? Let's copy. We know it's base64 encoded because of the hint, obviously. So let's copy this. But oh, if you guys are uh, confused about where to find CyberChef from, just Google CyberChef, it's very famous. Okay, paste. Tamam. Let's go here all already from base64. Drag here. Wow. It's even more gibberish, but we'll talk about this gibberish in a second, okay? So this is CyberChef. Very nice, very simple to use. You can like, if, if I had like five times in a row, I'll just keep dragging from base64, from base64, you know? You can, but that's like advanced CyberChef, you know? So some of you are gonna ask, no, I wanna be a cool guy. I never wanna leave my terminal. How can I do this from the terminal? I'll tell you, okay, Habibi, no problem. Here, let's do cat, and then we're gonna pipe to a command called base64, wow, who would have thought? Dash D for decode, ta-da, same thing. I can pipe to base64 to encode, and this is just, you know, we're not really getting much done by encoding it again, but, so, this, we heard something, we knew what this was, oh, shit. I removed the message. So remember what we said, we said, it was base64 encoded first, and then this is an MD5 hashed password. So hashing and encoding, very good concepts in computers. So hashing is nothing like encoding. Hashing is a one-time cryptographical, uh, not one-time, one-way cryptographical op operation. You, in, you hash something, you can never get it back. 
It's in that hashed form. But the thing about a hashing algorithm is that if you give it the same input, it will always provide the same output. Okay? We use this for passwords. Right? Imagine. You come to sign up for a website. Okay? Let's say your password is password. I take the password. I run it through the hashing algorithm. I get some text, something that looks like this, some output. I put that in the database. The next time you sign in, whatever you type in the password field, I take it, hash it, and if the two hashes are the same, then I know you typed in the same password. This is how I achieve anonymity. As a website owner, I don't know what your password is. I just know what the hash of your password is. That way, if I get hacked, your password doesn't get leaked. Your password hash gets leaked. Okay? Now, hashing algorithms, there's so many of them. MD4, MD5, SHA1, SHA256, SHA512, uh, Bcrypt. But there is literally a competition held every two, three years for a bunch of scientists to come up with a new hashing algorithm. Okay? Why? Because as computers advance, cracking hashes gets easier. So can you imagine um, how, let's say I have this hash. How would I crack it? Well, I can't use any mathematical operation because the math is solid. The math is one way, right? There is no way mathematically, if you look at the math, please don't, okay? You cannot get this to go back to its original thing. If you want to know a hint about the math, I'll tell you. Uh, do you guys know the modulus operator in math, which is uh, give me the remainder, right? So let's say, let's do 10 mod 3. Answer is 1, right? If I imagine I give you this one, and I'm telling me, tell me the two original numbers that give you this one. You'll never know. There's a million combinations for things that can give you remainder one. So this is kind of like that, where there is, you just mathematically cannot get back the original. So, but what we can do is we can take a bunch of words and hash them and compare the hash. Hash the word apple. Is this hash same as this? No. Move on. Hash. Keep hashing, 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 hashing until you get hash password. Is password the same as this? Yes. Then that means that this hash is password. Okay? Actually, there is one part of your computer that is very goddamn good at doing math, which is your graphics card. Okay? Yes. No. Then the hashing algorithm is abandoned. This is what we call a collision. The moment any scientist can prove that two, Im two inputs give the same hash, we burn the, whole, we burn the whole hashing algorithm. Anybody who uses it, we, we burn the guy also. Okay? So MD5 was abandoned. Uh, back in 2012, some scientists managed to do the first ever hash collision with MD5. So since then, we abandoned MD5. SHA-1 also followed soon after. And so those two algorithms, you're not recommended to use at all because it's been proven that two inputs, different inputs, can give the same output. Okay? Also, so one very useful application of hashing is what if, what if we're both very paranoid? I want to send you a file, and I want to make sure that nobody in the middle, you know, edited the file to say something different. I will send you the file, and I'll send you the hash of the file. And you can hash the file, and if you get the same hash, you know that the file is exactly the same as the one I sent you. Right? Because hashing algorithms will go through every byte in that file. Every, nothing will be left. So hash, hashing doesn't just apply to text. It applies to any bytes, anything, okay? Any data. So that was a lot of talk about hashing. Um, how do we break this hash? We need to break this hash. Well, depends on how much we want to get into this topic. There's like a bajillion ways. Okay, yes. You can if you want to fry your laptop and your legs with the, with the laptop. So Hashcat, what you just said, Hashcat is the most famous hash cracking tool available. So one part of my job, which is very fun because I have a 3080 Ti, is I go back home to my computer and uh, after a pen test, when I, so usually when I hack companies, I steal their hashed passwords, right? And this, has not, this is not, not a part of my job whatsoever. This is more like a personal hobby. I take the hashes home and I run them on the uh, GPU and I just see what I, can, what I can get back from the GPU. Depends on the hashing algorithm. Some of them are... Uh, I think on my 3080 Ti, I can do uh, about 10 trillion MD5 hashes a second. Yeah, you guys thought it was going to be slow. It's not. 
It's not slow at all, okay? So this is the 3080 Ti, by the way. I can, you can go on these websites like vast.ai. Uh, I can rent 12 4090s for $5 an hour. And at that point, I think whatever your password is, <laughs> if it's an MD5, I will get it, okay? So let's try to crack this. We don't want to use a GPU, okay? I don't want to open the hash crack. And shoo -shoo. I don't want to do that, okay? So what if I told you, since we learned one important thing about hashes is that when no matter what the input is, if, it's, if the same input is given to the hash, it will be the same output, why don't I just pre-compute every possible input and just store them in a file? We call that a rainbow table. So why is it called that? Because God intended it so. So if you don't want to waste the time pre like cracking this password live, you can just pre-hash, let's say, every possible combination of every possible key on your keyboard from zero characters to 10 characters. I mean, the file will end up being around one TB, but there you go, pre-computed. So there are websites online that do exactly that. We can just take this and give it to those websites that host those dictionary files or what we call rainbow tables and it will reverse this MD5 for us. So let's do just that. I know one called hashes.org, which is so far unblocked because the other ones are blocked in the UAE. I don't know, you can take that up with the TDRA, not me. Let's paste, dot com. Yeah, whatever, same thing. Yeah, but Crackstation is blocked. Yeah, yeah. C5, M, M, 7, 6. Okay, there we go. See? There we go. So, in an instant, it found that this MD5 password stands for cryptic. I can. Actually, we can actually... So remember someone commented earlier why there was a command MD5 sum in my terminal. Because MD5 is actually a command on Linux. You can MD5 stuff. What if you want to know the MD5 of something? So let's say I want to know the MD5 of apples. Here you go. Echo. NE. For, ignore the NE for now. Pipe 2 MD5 sum. So the, that's the MD5 of the word apples. Again, let's do cryptic. And let's make sure that it's the same. Cryptic. 59D63, right? 59D63. Okay. We clear on hashing? Hashing is a whole topic by itself. I gave a whole two hour lecture on hashing when I was a student. It was, and I did the whole GPU cracking and all that stuff. We can do that another time. What? Yeah, I think the capture is just annoying. But anyway, we did it, okay? Yeah, I, <laughs> I think it's just because we all access the website at the same time. All right. So, any questions? Base64 decoding, MD5 hashing, we cracked it. Yes. So, passwords are usually stored in hashed form. So, if I want to know what your actual password is, let's say I hacked Google which would never happen, okay? And I pulled the hashes from the Google database. I want to know what your actual password is. I can't log in with your hash, right? So I will crack it. Now I know what your actual password is. Yes. The only way to do that is to do this or crack the hash. Yeah, it's one way. That's the whole point of hashing, one way. All right, so. By the way, passwords on Windows are also stored as hashes. It's actually a very special hashing algorithm called NTLM. And on Linux, it's also a special hashing algorithm called, uh, it's not special, but bcrypt. Yeah, if you crack a hash, everybody knows your password, yeah. When hackers dump websites online, when they dump the databases of websites, everybody races to crack those hashes because they want to know what your passwords are. Yeah. You, there are, the, uh, you just, so remember how I said the same input will give you the same output always? Let's say your password is Apple123. If I go to the MD5 hashing algorithm and I, type, and I give Apple123 and I have your hash, I'll just keep comparing the hashes. So there's a tool called Hashcat, which uses your GPU to hash many, many, many words in a second. 
I think, uh, I, like I said, at my home, I can do 10 trillion hashes a second on my 10, uh, 30 ADTI. So I give it a big word list, or I tell it to try every combination of letters, and it will be like, apple, hash, same hash, no. Banana, hash, same hash, no. But it'll just do that 10 trillion times a second. Yeah? Everything uses hashes. Every operating system stores the hashes, unless it's a stupid operating system, uses uh, hashes as the storing mechanism for passwords. Every, yep. Yes. Yeah, if your password is something like, today I went to the supermarket and I got a, you know, sure, no problem, it will be uncrackable. Which is why, by the way, we recommend long passwords. So for example, uh, I don't know most of my passwords. I just know the password to my password uh, manager. And my password manager is a password something like, please God, don't let this password get stolen or my life is over. And then like a bunch of numbers and symbols. I forget this, no one will crack this, okay? Yep. How? Uh, no, but there's a certain level of paranoia that comes with learning cybersecurity. The, you're like, you know, this is you right now, ignorant, like my life is safe and everything, and then this is you learning cybersecurity, and be like, oh my God, everything in my life is insecure, what can I do? And then it goes down, and then it's like, no matter what I do, some Russian guy will get into anyway, so khalas, life is good. Live life to the fullest every day. <laughs> this is where I'm at, at the end of the spectrum. now. <laughs> so... Let's move on, yeah? So the password is cryptic, aka and the flag is cryptic. So let's leave, and then let's go to challenge 12, and the password is cryptic. Hello? My server? Is my server dead? Okay, there we go. Just, uh, it's shy sometimes. Yeah. Okay, this one. <laughs> okay, so... It says here, this flag is a picture. How can I view a picture in the terminal? Can you find a way to view it and get the flag? Okay, so let's LS. <laughs> okay, we have here totally not a flag. Let's just, again, monkey see, monkey do. A cat. <laughs> okay. It did not work. My terminal is not happy that I cut this file. Let's try again. Maybe it will work the more I do it. Okay. So clearly, I can't cut this file. So we learned about a command called file, right? There's a command called file, which tells you the type of the file that you're looking at. So file. Okay. So it says right here, this file, it says right here. JPEG image data, blah, 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 blah. I don't care about any of this. Okay? Well, at least now we know from the file command that this is a picture. So remember when I talked about using base64 to transfer files? One very dumb way of moving this file is to base64 encode this file, copy the base64 encode, and then paste it in your computer and decode it. Which is a very, you're just replicating what the internet is doing, but you're doing it yourself. Okay? So. <laughs> Just to show you how big base64 is, so like if I base64 encode, hello sir. Okay, it's gonna take us a lot, a lot of time to copy this. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we need to answer a very, oh wow, if I talk really close into the mic, it works. So you guys have, have just been talking like this the whole time? <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, how do I move files with SSH? <laughs> so, <laughs> SCP, oh, someone else got it, okay, yes. MV, but MV will just move it inside. I want to move files from that computer, I want to bring it to my computer. How can I do this? The lucky engineers who wrote this many years ago, also answered this question. They created a different command than SSH called SCP. So SSH stands for Secure Shell. SCP stands for Secure Copy. Okay? Basically. So what SCP does is you have a computer that you can SSH into. You want to grab a file or upload the file. That's how you do it. So let's learn about SCP. Okay. Here we go. 
how are you going to copy? How are you going to move this? Like, I, I want to download this file. Control C, you'll just go back to your computer. You know? Okay. So, let's learn about SCP. Uh, bear with me because the syntax of SCP is a bit different than SSH, so we're going to have to learn together. Let's find out where this file is, right? Where is this file? It's just in the home directory, pwd, of slash home slash child2. So, slash child12. So, technically, the whole, the full path of this file is like this. Okay, yeah, it can't execute. Yeah, obviously. It's not, it's not a, it's a picture. It's not an exe. Okay. So far, so good. Let's log out. We're going to replace our SSH command with SCP. Woo. Now, every copy command in Linux, the first argument is source. Second one is destination. So the first argument is going to be, I'm going to remove this, child12 at cloud.deadpackets.pw, colon. So colon after the host to tell where, what is the file you want to download. We want to download this file. So we're going to copy this, copy, paste. And where do I want to download it? In this folder. I'm just going to do dot. Dot just means this folder, OK? Now, you noticed I removed the port. Yes. So the port in SCP is capital P for some reason. And it goes as the first. Oh, my god. Thank you. OK? You can even see here it's telling you dash P for capital port. OK? So dash capital P, 22000. All right? It's going to ask me for the password, which is cryptic. Oh, hello, sir? OK, there we go. Download it. If I do ls, wow, I downloaded a file. Truly, uh, some different times we're experiencing. So I downloaded this file. Let's open. Let me just rename it, OK, so that we have the JPG. Uh, uh, I'm just going to call this flag.jpg. Open flag.jpg. Ta-da. All good. Easy stuff. Yes. What? Oh, we when we were in the computer, I did PWD to know which folder we're in. And then, this, so we were in slash home slash child 12. And then I just added the name of the file. Totally not the flag. Let me show you the syntax of the command again, just to go through it. So, SCP dash capital P for port, okay, 22000, the host, colon, the file you're trying to download, space, dot for current folder. Cryptic, all lowercase. When I was in the mach when we were in the shell, right before I left, I typed PWD to get the current directory, and then there's the name of the file. Fold. Nice. Yes. Secure copy. So copies files through SSH. If you want to copy a file from the other computer on your computer, you use SCP. Or if you want to upload, same thing. Yes, I downloaded the picture so I can view it on my machine. Oh, on Windows, you don't have SCP. Windows laptops don't have SCP. Oh, I think the open command is not defined in... in, in just, just open it in File Explorer. Yeah. Right, any questions? We just downloaded the picture, we opened it, Hello, that's it. Simple. Yeah, because we have like 15 minutes left, I think I'll just do one more, then we'll open FAQ again. Any question? No question. Yes. How did I know the exact path? When I was inside the, the machine, I did PWD to print working directory, print where I am right now. And I was in slash home slash child 12. And I just added a slash and the name of the file I want to download. No. 
That's it. Just the name of the file. Yes. Oh, the dot, yes. This is destination. This is source, destination. The destination is dot in Linux means here. This file, this folder. Download here. Okay? Any questions? No question? Okay, moving on. Good. I, I keep asking because I want you guys to ask questions. Ali, no problem. All right. Awesome. Okay. So, we have the flag. It's oh hi there. Okay? So, oh hi there is the password for the next one. Let's go next one real quick. I think this will be the last one because I think this one will be a bit complicated. Uh, where is my SSH command, please? Uh, yeah, uh, honestly, I, I, I'm with you guys till uh, 11 p.m. Yeah, yeah, I don't mind, <laughs> but the university will shut down on us. Oh, hi there. Awesome. Okay. You have intercepted a chat log between two hackers. Can you find out where they hit the flag? Nice. Ah, nice, 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 nice. Okay. So, let's read the chat log. Yes? Chat history? Hello? Sir? Okay. okay. Again, forgive me for this cringe dialogue. I wrote this like four years ago. Okay, I was still a student like you guys back then. So, we have two people that are talking about how they hit the flag in the man. I don't think they mean a person, but let's continue. <laughs> let's just hope no one needs to know how Echo works on Linux. And then this person says, you hid the flag in the docs of Echo. That's it. You don't have to read the rest because it's embarrassing. Okay? So, we're going to learn about a new feature. So, quick question. You just read this. What would you Google? How to open the documentation of Echo. Brilliant question. You will learn about a, co a command in Linux called MAN, short for manual. So it turns out the lucky engineers, instead of us asking because God intended it so, they actually wrote manuals for every command in Linux, even cute LS. They wrote manuals. Can you imagine? So we can actually read the manual of any command we want by doing MAN space the command. So let's do MAN LS, for example. MAN LS. What? I don't think it's a shell utility, actually. No. Man, LS. Okay, here we go. Okay? It opens this manual, and like, you know, someone wrote this many years ago, probably dead by now. Okay? List information about the files, blah, 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 and then all the options of LS-A does not ignore entries starting with dot. Dash capital A, do not list dot and dot dot, okay? You wanna keep going? I mean, it's, it's just gonna explain all of them. Yeah, thanks, thanks, thanks. So, what command do we wanna know the documentation of based on this chat? Echo, man, echo. And it's there, here, in plain sight, <laughs> literally. <laughs> That's it. Well, yeah, you can. Literally, man, and then uh, pipe to grab, sure. So it's right here, yeah? So I edited the man files myself, and I put the flag in there. So that's it, in plain sight. Let... Yeah, yeah, only for me, only for me, yeah. All right, let's do one last one, because this was a very simple topic. I think we'll do the last one. Any questions about man files? Anything? Nothing? Good. Okay, good, 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 good. Very self-explanatory. Again, a lot of these challenges are like just bite-sized pieces of information, just tiny, tiny, tiny pieces of information. Child 14, in plain sight. My server is dying. You're, you're destroying my poor server sitting next to my bed. Okay, so I can't log into challenge 14. Do you know why that is? Because there was a message. Oh, hi there. There was a message in red 
that I forgot to read. All right, this is the last piece of useful information, and then we're going to... It says, for the next challenge, the username is not child 14. Use information on this system to guess the next username. I want to hear suggestions. What? Echo what? Echo? Sure. Echo. I will just echo. OK. No, not you. You log in as Echo? No. I don't know what kind of bug you discovered. Dash A? No, no. Again, we need to use some information that is built into Linux. OK. Let's compare it to Windows. I ask you to list for me all the users on a Windows machine. How would you do that? C slash. What if I don't know what users there are? I want to. I want to see a list of all the users on the system. Okay, I can go to slash C. Which folder in Windows holds all the users? Users. What's the equivalent in Linux? Home. Great. CD home. We can just do LS home. LS slash home. Good job. There you go. You have a bunch of. All the challenges, okay, da, 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 da. and we have some other ones here, Elliot, Jack, Mr. Robot, and then the Poon challenges, which are unavailable to you guys, Spooderman, the Soul Stone, okay, we have, this is a list of all the users on the system. Now, I'm going to show you a really cool genius hacker trick. What if I wanted to know the order in which these users were created? This doesn't tell me anything about the order. There's a file in Linux that holds all the users and not just all the users but what their shells are so there's a file in linux which is named in a very weird way and it actually has a funny story there's a folder there's a file in linux called slash etc slash password but it doesn't hold any passwords inside it why because well because god intended it so let's cat slash etc slash pass wd the short of password there we go. Every single user, including these are like some system users. We have root, bin, shutdown, news, mail. These are just some users in the system. You know, they're not you available to you. We can go down to the first ever user, child zero. Child zero all the way down to child 13 and then ta -da, Mr. Robot. So these are in the order that they were created. So this is how you filter. Instead of doing it the dumb way, where I would just have to try every single user, this literally gives me an incremental list of the users that were created in the system. It's not a dumb way, it's just a slower way. This is a faster way. Okay? So just a very quick, this is the username, the user ID, the group ID. We'll talk about that later. Don't worry about that right now. The first name, but it's just Linux user, their home directory, slash home slash that, and their shell. Bin bash, which is the same as us, yeah, same for everybody, as you can see. E sla no, slash etc slash pass wd. Okay, yes. This, a list of all the users in the system and their information. Yep, if I'm a hacker, I would actually like to steal this to know who's in the system. I want to know who has accounts on the system. Good. So the reason why this is called slash password is because in old versions of Linux, they used to store, you see this X that's here? Did you see how they all have X? This that was where the password used to go in old versions of Linux back in the like 90s. Then they realized that's dumb. So then they moved the passwords to a different file called slash etc slash shadow. Now none of you will be able to open that file. It's only readable by root. But this is readable by everyone. Well, you're not sudo. Yeah, but you are not sudo, so it won't work. <laughs> sudo is basically run as admin. Okay. I think that's it. Our last... Uh... Okay. okay, sure. Let's do the next one. 
you know they get very complicated <laughs> later, right? What was the password? In plain sight. In plain sight. Okay. Oh, this is going to be a dumb one, guys. Okay, here we go. <laughs> okay, guys, we have here a file and it says the numbers. What do they mean? Okay, and we have here a bunch of numbers. Okay, you have all the information you need to solve this. It's, it's ASCII. Yeah. It's, it literally says ASCII flag. Yeah. So you will just go online, ASCII number to take. You, we can use Cybershef, same website, by the way. No, I think this is a dumb one. My, I didn't uh, really order them in terms of uh, difficulty very much. You know, it's just whatever idea came to my head. So let's go here. Let's remove the base64 encode. And let's go uh, ASCII. Is there an ASCII thing here? No. Oops. Data format. From ch Actually, from char code would work, actually. From delimiter space base16. No, base10. Ta-da! The cycle ends here, okay? Again, you can use a different website than Cyberchef, but again, it's just ASCII to uh, text. Cycle ends here. <laughs> okay, just because you guys want the last one. Listen, whoever wants to stay, I mean, you guys don't have classes. You don't have no responsibilities. What are you going to do? You're going to go home, cry yourself to sleep now because you have, like, I don't know, physics or two to study for. How many of you have physics two final? Only you two? Good luck. You have my spirit and my soul with you. Physics one final type. Okay, no no freshman here. The freshman ran home. Good luck. <laughs> Ah, but no physics one? Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Me being a computer engineer and learning about uh, gravity, if I throw the ball at the guy, how many? <laughs> yeah, I want to co copy. Why are you opening this? Okay, so after Mr. Robot, we stopped at which challenge? Challenge 14, I think now, yeah? 15, okay. Just cat, just, yeah. Yeah, they're not all <laughs> useful. You guys are destroying my server. Oh, this is a nice one. Okay. Okay, here we go. All right. So, let's see if you guys can get this one. We have a time bomb program. Okay, time bomb. Quick, give me the MD5 of the word bomb. We have 50 milliseconds. Taban, those 50 milliseconds were gone by the time I moved from, got off the chair, okay? But let's see what we can do. Let's get the MD5 of bomb first. How do we get the MD5 of bomb? Hash, the, we can go to a website, We can, but let's do it the echo way, yeah? So we'll go echo, dash NE. Okay, so for those of you who are going to ask what NE is, so N, N means don't put a new line character. So you guys, when you know when you do C out, you do end L, right? The problem is the MD5 algorithm will actually take the end L as part of the word. So we don't want the end L. That's it. That's what I'm doing. So echo, NE, bomb, pipe, MD5 sound. Okay, so let's try. Time bomb, copy this, paste. We took 4,300 milliseconds. Okay, so any ideas? Nope. Think of how this program works. See out this stuff, see in, compare. That's it. So, we learned about a way to send the output of some commands to the input of other commands. 
the bar pipe okay so why don't we just pipe pipe echo bomb to md5 to time bomb Ta -da! zero milliseconds instant you can pipe 20 000 times literally look zero milliseconds Linux immediately took the output of the first command, just sent it to the input of the second command. It's actually funny because there's two commands going on here. That means the MD5 algorithm took less than a millisecond to run, to give you <laughs> the, the, okay? So that, that's it. MD5 is just a hashing algorithm. So it's the program internally, all it's doing is just doing string compare on a pre-decided, pre on the hash of bomb basically. But it just wants the input in less than 50 milliseconds. That's it. So I'm just reminding you that piping gives the input instantly. Send the word bomb to MD5. Get its MD5. Send this to time bomb. Adam left. Do I just keep going? No, I have to keep going. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll do 15, oh, this is, we'll do 16 and then stop. You guys can ask me questions, yani. I'm not gonna disappear like a like genie yani, after we, we're done. Yes. What? <laughs> I, I, you, I had to think about that. All right, so tick tock, tick tock, tick tock on the clock. Okay, here we go. Follow the adventure, Allah, this will take forever. Why did I pick this one? God, why? Uh, okay, we have a zip file. Okay. Okay, unzip. What's the password? Anything? Enter. Enter. Okay, we don't know the password. Yeah. So the exit code tails is a command. Why don't we just run it? Here. All right. Let me tell you a tale. Why do I have to write this? Got up just any written much. Okay. So we explored the worlds of Unix to find the exit code. We're gonna learn about what the exit code is. After our brave adventure, found the exit code. He found the chest. He, the chest needed a three-digit passcode. Could it be the exit code? Okay. So, do any of you have an idea what an exit code is? Good, good assumption. Okay, so you know when you guys do in programming one and uh, you run those programs and you put a return zero in your main? Why do you think that is? So if you remove the return, it will run, well, I promise, it will, it will exit. Why? Why do we put the return zero? Good. If you return anything but zero, the computer will start crying. Why? Well, it turns out the last number that your program returns is what we call an exit code. So when pe people wanted programs to have a way of telling the operating system something went wrong. So when you guys do return zero, zero is the only number of everything went okay. If you return anything but zero, negative one, it has to be an integer, so no 0.5s, right? Negative 1, 100, something went wrong. What went wrong? That depends on you, the developer, to write for each error code, you have a reason. Let's say you're doing a calculator. Divide by 0, return 1. Running out of integer space, return 2. Have you ever, when you run into a program and it crashes, it gives you an error code and it's like a big number, it's like uh, exit code 421, okay? Only the developers know what that means. That's the exit code. The application crashed or exited and gave an exit code. Every single command you do in Linux has an exit code. Everything, ls, copy. What if you do ls something that doesn't exist? How will ls tell the operating system that something went wrong? We can actually do a very quick demo of this. Yeah, 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 I know. So you see my nice terminal, okay? If I run ls, actually let's not run ls. Let's run a command, uh, actually let's do ls, sure, why not? ls slash 
uh, temp. I should not have done that. ls dot slash temp. Okay, cool. All right, everything is all great, sir. Let me ls something that doesn't exist. See that? See how my shell detected for me that the last command didn't go well? What's this to? The exit code. It's th this, that means the last command exit code zero, no problem. This, big problem. Last command did not run well. It exited with a non-zero exit code. This is the exit code. Uh oh, dot slash just means this folder starting from this folder and then. Yeah. Okay, everything in Linux has an exit code. So how do I read the exit code? How? Well, you can actually use echo to read exit codes like this. Echo dollar question mark. Same two again. Echo dollar question mark will tell you the exit code of the previous command. Let's use this piece of knowledge and run it on the exit code tails. What? Anta, you wanna? Oh, okay. So if you guys need to go uh, home with the bus, you can go. There's nothing really more for you guys to, I mean, there was one more piece of information for you to learn. 7.30, oh, you go back to Dubai? Anyone charge a bus? Wow, nobody suffering, the same suffering I used to do? Officially, we're done. Officially, we're done, yeah. I'm available. Yeah, so what I'll do not, Okay, so not to not to waste the time of anybody who wants to go home, I'll solve this. We'll stop. I'll do FAQ for those who want to ask me a question before you go to your winter break, and then for those who want to stay, uh, finals, adab, and then winter. Spend five years in cybersecurity. Type type. Okay, let's speed run this. Okay, very quickly. I just want to unzip this file. Okay, so unzip the the chest one nine three. Okay, you can't because you're not allowed to write files in this. So you have to go to dead temp. Okay, so I'll explain what dead temp is later. But let's just just bear with me. Go to dead temp. Excuse me. Hello. What was the password for this again? Oh my god. Oh, 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, exit code on zip 193. Okay, inside it was the final test, another binary. Okay, so yes, we unzipped it. We unzipped it. Inside it was another command. Okay, very quickly. It says, after opening the, te the chest, blah blah blah, our, wa our warrior found himself face to face with the wizard, only the worthy ones, blah blah blah. The answer is hidden inside of this binary itself, okay? So the password is somewhere in this binary. We're going to use the strings command, right? We learned about the strings command. The strings command is the, the strings command takes a file and just spits out all the strings. And you guys know what strings are, obviously. You're taking programming. Ta-da. We're going to go up to the top. We're looking for one word here. Ta-da. Destiny. Done. That's the password. So, again, how could I have done this? A smarter way of doing this? Actually, let's let's not fry your brains right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> All caps. Destiny. Yeah, normal CAD. They were they were always like that, by the way. Even before they, uh, if oh yeah, yeah, the math. It's always all when I was a student, Bordeaux, Like if you if you had a CAD friend, it was like the hardest thing ever. It's like you know when you had East Berlin and like West Berlin, you know. Okay, so what did we learn today? We learned about, we were, we were reminded of uh, piping. We learned about the ETC password. We learned about path. We learned about SCP. We learned about environment variables. We learned about man, the manuals. I kind of forgot what we learned. But thank you so much. Officially, we are done. Thank you. As always, these challenges will keep running. They are sitting in the server in my house. I have no reason to turn them off. So, I, I bought the server already. What money? My dad pays for electricity. Yeah. <laughs>